I had a girlfriend once who looked like that. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Scuba Dive on the Auric. I'm playing this on an Auric Atmos via an Auric Erebus SD card interface thingamajig. I don't have any instructions. I don't have any instructions with any of the Auric games I've got here. So if they don't give instructions in the game, you know how it is. Skill level 1 to 5. Now is that 1 as easy as fi and, and 5 as hard or not? Don't know. We'll go with 1. Um, um, controls? I don't know. I mean, I... Alright. Okay. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> How do I? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, that's me, I guess. I'm a little purple geezer swimming. I look a bit like a turtle. Um, what do I do? What? What? Don't get eaten. I, oh, God. What about these things? Can I do anything with these? Can't seem to go down. Can't. What about when they open? Oh, I picked one up. Oh, that's cool. So you've got to get... Whoops. I'm using cursor keys, and it's not easy at all. Gimme. No, down you fool. Oh. The cursor key layout on here is not intuitive. <laughs> so I just don't know where I'm going. Alright, gimme. Got that. I don't see how I can get those ones down there. Oops. Go down. Give me that. Got that. Can, what happens if I go off there? Can I get... Oh, I got one. It's like he's hammering. Have I got an oxygen bar? I, yes, I have. Okay. Come here. I'll... <laughs> Give me... Oh, I'm just going to wait. Come on. Come here. Give me... Oh. Come on. Open up. Give me... Ah, whatever. All right, we'll we'll go. I mean, there appears to be a, somewhere to go here, so we'll just go down here and see. Oh God! Oh bollocks! I got killed by a big red monster. Hmm. I had a girlfriend once who looked like that. Let's get off the boat. Can we get off the boat? We can't get off the boat. Oh, where where am I? Uh, there I am. Ah, oh, oh, balls. Do you know, I I like this. This is the kind of 8-bit gaming, 8-bit computer gaming that are... Oh, nasty. How are you meant to get off the boat with that there? Okay, it's moved a bit. And if I get off the boat, who's going to drive the thing? It's going to drift away. Let me out. Yeah, I mean, there's there's 8-bit gaming and there's 8-bit gaming. And this is, guess what? 8-bit gaming. Um, don't feel safe. You know, you get some 8-bit computer games that try to mimic arcade games that they're just not capable of doing. And, oh, bollocks. And so they're not good. This is doing its own thing. It's it's playing a game that is within the capabilities of the hardware. And that, to my mind, makes it a good game. It's primitive, it's very basic. I don't think it's written in basic. But 
it's fun. It's It's got a level of challenge that is partly down to game design and partly down to the limitations of the control using the keyboard with the cursor keys that are just... I, I imagine if you started your gaming on an Auric Atmos and these were the only controls you'd ever used, you'd be just fine. But we're spoiled in this day and age with ergonomically designed joy pads that are intuitive and you just don't have to think about um, playing on here. You've got to think about it. So it adds a level of difficulty and, and challenge. And it makes for a fun game. Anyway, I'm not going to play anymore because I want to record a batch. So, yeah, scuba diver or something on the Auric Atmos. Thank you for watching. Okay, today's question for Q&A is from Hooked On Classics, Simone, linked to her channel down there. She asks, for Q&A, how do you feel about handheld gaming going from the original Game Boy, Game Gear, Atari Lynx and the like to pretty much non-existent apart from mobile phones and Nintendo Switch hybrid console? Good question. Um, I don't actually agree that that is the current situation with handhelds. Um, granted, this question will have been asked a little while ago, but not so long ago that the um, the Nintendo Switch Mini, Lite, whatever, the smaller one that is purely a handheld now exists. It's not a hybrid. So there, there is a dedicated handheld console out there. But I get what you're saying. Handheld gaming used to be a significant part of the gaming landscape. You had your home consoles, you had computers, you had handhelds, and there were quite a few of them from different manufacturers. And now there is only one manufacturer that is making a handheld and a hybrid and making games specifically for it. That's true. That's that's fair. But that isn't the entire... Oh, and of course the, hand, the, the phones. I'm not even going to look at phone-based gaming. Uh, I, I, that's not gaming to me. It just isn't. I, I despise touchscreen gaming of any kind. Um, it's not... I won't knock anyone who does that kind of thing. I mean, your, your Candy Crush style game and, and your Infinite Runners, and I don't know what other... I suppose PUBG is... that's handheld kind of phone-based, but I'm just not interested. I don't care. If people want to play that, fine, but to me it's like, don't care. But there's another aspect to handheld gaming at the moment that I like. And that is stuff like, I can't reach it because it's all up there, the Chinese import emulation handhelds. They're absolutely booming. I don't think they're mainstream, um, but for a certain sector of the gaming market, they're very popular. People like me and many of my viewers um, and people who I watch buy these things and tinker with them and you know you can play everything on the affordable handhelds everything from Atari 2600 up to Dreamcast um, and that's great I love that I, I've got an R RG 351V my god they don't make them easy to say and it's my go-to handheld. I love it. It looks like a Game Boy, but I sit there playing Shenmue on it. I love that kind of thing. Um, and there are a lot of them. So that sector of the handheld market is very, very healthy. Um, but dedicated handhelds with first-party support, there is only Nintendo. And that's a shame. Or is it? Do I care? Honestly, n no, I don't. Um, I learned with the PSP that trying to shoehorn console-style video games onto a handheld 
doesn't work for me. It might work for other people, but it doesn't work for me. Because when I'm playing handheld games, I mean, I, I gave Shenmue as an example of stuff I do on my RG351V, but actually, while I'm pleased to be able to play that on that handheld, I actually don't. I've, I've played it once. Um, because I was stuck in a place where I had a lot of time on my hands and nothing better to do, well, no, just nothing to do, um, and I couldn't leave. <laughs> so uh, I, I played it, but that situation doesn't happen very often. Mostly if I'm handheld gaming, I want something quick and snappy and like a 10 minute play, 15 minutes, 20 tops. Um, so arcade gaming really, I would think versions of MAME on a handheld or like maybe Mega Drive games or something like that. I'm not even really play, spending much time like PS1 gaming, maybe stuff like Ridge Racer or whatever. Or a race on Gran Turismo 2. But anything more involved than that, and I just don't have the time in that kind of situation where I would be playing a handheld to get that involved in a game. And I discovered this with the PSP. The games were too involved, so I just didn't play them and I want to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Um yeah. So at the time that I my I've got a PSP Go and I really like it, but I really like it because it's got custom firmware on it. <laughs> Um, which makes it a really good way to put games onto my telly and at some point I'll do some gameplay videos of them and that's great and with the custom firmware com fair, custom firmware I can play emulated stuff it was like my main emulation handheld for a time until the Chinese stuff started coming out but when the PSP like the the bigger ones I had the big fat one. That was my main handheld and I realized quite quickly that it didn't suit my gaming purposes and I spent more time playing Game Boy Advance games because to me they were actually the pinnacle of handheld gaming. They had just the right level of depth and immediacy where you could pick them up, play them, you could play them for 10 minutes, you could play them for half an hour, you probably weren't going to play them any longer. To me that was perfect. So I'm never going to play Switch games um, because two reasons, I don't want anything with that kind of depth and I don't like the content that Nintendo produce. I'm just not interested. Uh, I have played on a Switch um, way 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 back when I was still living with well I'm not sure if I was living with her but still seeing Andrea she bought a switch and we played Super Mario Kart is it 8 deluxe whatever the, the Mario Kart that's on the switch and it was fun but that was it there was nothing else on it that was remotely of interest and honestly I, I wouldn't buy a switch just to play that one game however good it is um, and I look at the um, the PS Vita. I mean the support for it. There's still sort of some support. I don't know if new games are coming out. Maybe um, indie games, perhaps. Not sure. I look at it and I think, mm, would I like one of them? Because it's a really nicely made piece of kit. But. If it's indie games, well, honestly, I don't care about indie games. They're not, they don't use the hardware to the full capacity, so it's like to play that kind of game, well, I could just play retro games on something a lot simpler and cheaper. Uh, I'm not really interested in hacking it to run homebrew or, or emulators because Chinese hardware, again. Um, and I'm not interested in, in Vita games and playing them on the go because the whole depth thing, uh, that kind of game doesn't work for me um, on a handheld in that kind of situation where I would play a handheld. And it, 
The only other place I'm, or way I'm going to have the time to play a game with that kind of depth on a handheld is if I'm at home. But if I'm at home, why am I going to play on a handheld? Because I've got a PS4 and a PS3 and a PS2 and a whole ton of other stuff that will play that kind of game and look better. No, and there's one other thing as well. Um, why I'm not inclined to spend a lot of time playing handheld games and why only games where it's a quick play work for me. And my eyesight is shot. It is bad. Um, I've got to wear glasses all the time. And if I'm focusing on something there, it doesn't matter. I can't focus effectively without straining my eyes. Um, I, I've got these glasses, these are my reading glasses, which are set to focus about two feet at arm's length. And I don't play my handhelds at arm's length, it's just silly. Um, I've got these glasses, which are my main glasses for like day-to-day -day doing stuff, driving, whatever, and they're bifocal, so I, I can read about that you can't see about that distance which is okay for a handheld but it means I'm sitting there like that and that's bloody uncomfortable <laughs> I just I don't want to do that or I can take the glasses off and play it there I don't want to do that either so um, handheld gaming if I play it for more than like 10-15 minutes it it gives me eye strain and that gives me a headache. So, um, there are two men for me, that several factors, let's not say too many, there are several factors that cause me to not give a damn that handheld gaming has changed to the extent that the only first party manufacturer of hardware and software is Nintendo and they're doing something that I don't care about anyway. D don't care, not concerned. Mm, handheld gaming that I like is very very healthy and that's the emulator based Chinese things. Um, I think they're great, they suit me perfectly. Obviously I know this is just me. This is just my my opinion, my preferences based on my own circumstances and physical decrepitude um, and for other people I think youngsters won't know any different some people my age will feel the same way as me about it maybe their eyes will be knackered and they haven't got the time I don't know how many other people will care maybe a lot maybe not I don't know I'm I'm less um, I'm less of a purist about gaming and the various types of gaming than I used to be. These days it's like... Time is precious and I haven't got enough of it to worry about stuff like that. It's like if I'm gaming I'll find something I like and I'll play it. And if it ain't perfect I'll play something else but there, there, there is so much choice and variety and whatever that um, the fact that there aren't dedicated first party handheld manufacturers making decent software for it mm, just don't care yeah okay I'm going to shut up waffling now anyone else who's got a question they would like answering in a video like this Leave your question in the comments below and begin with four Q&A so I know not to just answer in the comments. And thank you for watching. Um, it says here Bedway offers his thanks to those who subscribe to his Patreon account thing. Uh, is that what he needs? Okay, um, little additional piece of stuff. 
this is playing on the Auric Atmos. It, I, I didn't know what it was. I just loaded it, and it's some um, it's it's music demonstrating the audio capabilities of the Auric, and I'm impressed. I'm just going to shut up and let you listen for a minute. I don't know what it's doing. Maybe it's just being arty. Anyway, we'll stop there. Thank you for watching and listening. I was doing something else. Yeah, okay.